Hello and welcome back to another Swans cast match preview for the big game, the managerless derby, if you like, uh, <laughs> which is going to be on Saturday, three o'clock, uh, 9th of December. Swansea are heading up to Rotherham and I am joined by Mick from the New York Talk podcast. So thanks for joining me, Mick. No problem, though, anytime. And for anyone out there, happy Christmas jumper day. I had mine on all day for work. But, um, Have you? you yeah, think, yeah. You? It's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'll chuck your hat on. Podcast, <laughs> made me wear this for the whole podcast. I'm not That's wearing fine. It now. <laughs> be, I'm sure there'll be a few more of them going into Christmas now. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you're watching it today, it's obviously Christmas jumper day. Um, but I'm assuming a lot of people won't be watching it on the day of recording because it's quite late. So nonetheless, we're getting into Christmas anyway. So I'm sure everyone's in their festive mood. Both teams in their ultra festive moods with no manager so um we'll talk about the situation at rotherham we have kind of joined you in in the hunt for a manager mm -hmm. you're a little bit further in a little bit longer since you've sacked your manager and maybe it's a bit more frustration for yourselves we are hoping we don't end up in that sort of boat because if we are four weeks into a manager hunt our january window probably looks a bit tricky and that's never a good good thing i think going into january with no direction so um Let's let's before we get there, let's turn it back to the summer just a little bit to see how you ended up maybe in this situation. So, what happened in the summer then? Any big changes in Rotherham, uh, back of house, and maybe on the field if you like? Uh, back of house, no. Uh, Matt Taylor was the manager. He, he came in midway. Well, I said not even midway through last season, after the eight or nine games uh, last season, and uh, he managed to keep us in the division. Um, some would argue in no small part to the first eight games where I think we were sixth after after the first the, the, those games when, when Paul Warren left and then Matt Taylor came in and he was the form throughout the season was patchy shall we say you know we had we had one or two decent runs which which managed to bag us just about enough points but we also had one or two really really poor runs particularly after the World Cup um, but anyway, he managed to keep us up, and then then there were some pretty pretty wholesale changes in the in the squad during the summer. Um, and you know what? When we came into the season, we, we talked about it many times on the podcast throughout that sort of summer transfer window. We felt that he'd done some really really good business. He he brought in some championship quality players, um, players that probably didn't tend to fit the way that we were used to playing. You know, players who could play football rather than um, rather than the sort of long ball um, style that we'd been tarred with uh, over the years, which was slightly unfair, I think. But then I would say that one time, I guess. <laughs> and and when I'm talking to a Swansea fan, obviously you were the opposite. The complete yeah, I was going to say if you're going to compare team. against us last season, anything's long ball, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, but, but yeah, we were really pleased. We were really, really pleased with the uh, the quality he brought in. And then, by the end of August, most of them were on this treatment table. And it was just, it was horrific, the start to the season in terms of the injuries. And that's, that, that's what put us where we are now, plus a couple of other issues. But summer transfer, and we were really pleased with it. I see from looking at the signings they made there's one that stands out for me that will interest swansea fans and that is the signing of sam klukas on a free transfer yeah. um once a 15 million transfer record breaking signing for swansea city from hull mm. who let's just say the relationship um it's is it's one of the the ex that you know there's a little bit of a bad breakup um mm. So if he does feature for yourselves against us on Saturday and scores, expect a bit of drama from the fans, I guess, who don't appreciate seeing that and his celebration mm. because he likes to come and it's one of them that he will run over to the away fans and he will make a point of saying, I just scored against you again because he's done it a few times, unfortunately. So Sam Klukas, what have you actually made of him since you've signed him on a free? Well, you, you can be safe in the knowledge that on Saturday he will not be running over to you to celebrate scoring a goal because he pulled his hamstring at Watford a few weeks ago. Oh, so he's shame. another one that's out. Um, we, 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 we suffered two hamstring injuries in that game uh, to, to him and Cafu, both of whom have not played since. So so you'd be happy with that. Um, it yeah, took a while definitely. to settle in, to be honest, but you can tell that he's, he, he's a quality footballer. You know, he is. 
uh, certainly for us. Um, and yeah, he, he started to sort of bed into the team and, and, and have an effect on games and then got injured, which seems to be the, the story of the season for, for virtually everybody that's gone out. So, but, uh, but Sam Klukas, yeah, we we're beginning to get to like him and then now we don't know. <laughs> Yeah, he's 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 one of the, he's probably one of the most um, disliked Swansea players of recent memory. Wow! Even he had a season here, and yeah, it just did not go well. Um, I, 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 I'm amazed. He's about fourteen. I know. Well, he's he's. he's <laughs> I know he's the not. A bit. He's done the rounds a bit lately, hasn't he? He's, um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think it's the it's it's look. He played for us in the season that we got relegated. So there's obviously question marks about some of the commitment to some of the players, yeah. and then. Towards the end of the season, maybe got a bit sour, um, and the way that he left as well. I think, I think, like obviously the fans voicing their discontent when the team's not performing and ultimately ended in relegation. I think he's one of the players that maybe took exception to some of the criticisms and didn't appreciate it. Like, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it and does absolutely. It just yeah. kind of like carried on then afterwards, and it's always been mm-hmm. a bit. And when he scored for us, uh, scored against us for Stoke. I think he scored twice in a game and he was just you know so eager to rub it in and i yeah. guess that makes things even worse then yeah it, it, obviously just for fans for the player i'm sure it's a it's a bit of a sweet revenge yeah. to, to certainly for, for the fans it's incredible yeah. i'm sure he loved it and um yeah well i'm sure there'll be comments now coming in about it but at the time he signed him <laughs> record breaking record breaking transfer so I guess that made it made the whole thing worse again, but um, yeah. no one really thought he was worth the price we paid. But there we go. Yeah. That's that's in the past now, and he won't <laughs> be on the pitch. So we'd be pleased to hear that. Maybe he'll be on the pitch when he comes down here later in the season. But um, let's get to more recent times. We mentioned it at the start of the video. Obviously, you're looking for a manager, same as ourselves now. How is that? How did that come about then? Let's, let's just say, how did that come about? Um, no away wins in a year, uh, in a calendar year. Um, the last one being away at Sheffield United last season. Not, I mean, it, uh, given the size of our club and where we are expected to be, that's not entirely unexpected. Um, however, a few draws in there would have been nice. There weren't many. Um, but the performance levels away from home have been nothing short of appalling. They've been absolutely dreadful. Um, and we have been such a Jekyll and Hyde team this season, and, and but it was the away performances ultimately that led to Matt Taylor's demise, um, and and the inability to transfer the home form into those away games. Yeah. Um, so I think that 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 basically is what led to it, um, and and it, I can't I can't emphasise enough how stark the difference in level of performance has been. Um, you know, we, we 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 played Blackburn very early in the season when the referees were dishing out yellow cards for people breathing in the wrong direction, and then um, we we were two 0 up and ended up getting a player sent off for for running into the crowd celebrating, and then we got another player booked for kicking the ball away. We were two 0 up. Blackburn get Blackburn. Uh, so what's is it Schmedic Schmodic? I can't remember his name. The guy with something the, like that. Yeah. Yeah. He kicks the ball away after being given offside, already on a yellow. Doesn't get booked. Goes on to score two goals and and, and equalise. So that that. But we we played them off the park, you know. Yeah. The goal disallowed against Leicester, which would have made it two two, and we were probably very unlucky to get that. We we gave them a real good game. We we played well against Leeds. We beat Norwich. The performances at home have been really really good. In contrast, the away form has been like the dog and duck. It has been appalling. And I, and I think Matt Taylor just he just couldn't he couldn't replicate it away from home, and I think the the chairman just decided enough's enough. That's weird. That is like is what what would you say the reason is for that? Because like surely <laughs> you would just say do the same as what you're doing. You'd have thought so, wouldn't you? Um, I mean, if you if if anybody if any Swansea fans are really interested, you could go back and look at probably six or seven hours worth of our podcast where we discuss this, and we still haven't come up with a conclusion. Yeah, as to, as to what it is. Um, it, it, it's it's got to be a psychological issue because the players yeah. are more than capable, um, but they're just they've just not been able to to replicate it. I guess, arguably, some of the tactics that that uh, that Matt Taylor 
some of the, the the ways he wanted to approach games perhaps was not were not right. I think he he, he kind of looked to uh, particularly away from home. Well, only away from home. Looked to stay in the game for the first sort of first half, maybe first hour, and then start to push on. But by the time we get the push on, we're two 0 down. It's a championship, you know. Yeah, you're going to get punished. So, um, so yeah, it, it was inevitable. I think that he was uh, he was going to lose his job. I was just kind of like the opposite, where um, not not contrasting in terms of points. It's actually, quite similar with points. We've had eleven points at home, ten away, but we played one more home match than away. Uh, mm. balance, it would balance out this weekend. Um, but like in terms of the performances, quite often it's felt better when we've been away. We like put a better shift in and try to get a result. We nearly got a result and have got a couple. And then at home, it's been a bit more disappointing where maybe you're expected to get more results and we haven't mm. been. Um, so th- so it's quite equal in terms of the points, but you t- normally assume home is higher yeah. than away, um, which is part of the reason I think Duff obviously is, has gone. Mm. Um, and the players seem a bit... Playing uh, under the home fans and you know, watching is, is tricky when you're in a bad spell as well. Yeah. And going yeah. away from home is like not the pressure. Yeah. I guess for Rotherham, maybe it's a little bit different because of what you said in terms of your history and where you expect it to be. But it's more important then for you to pick results up away from home to then maintain a position in the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and and it, and it just wasn't happening. Um, and the chairman pulled the trigger. So Yeah. Whether well, I can see yeah. it's two points away from home from yourself, from yourself yeah. this season in 10 games. Only Sheffield Wednesday are worse off. Uh, but Plymouth also struggling. They only got three, so yeah. Coming maybe going away from home for them for recently promoted club seems to be a bit of a challenge uh, from, mm. from that reading. But uh, Ipswich definitely breaking the mould, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another it, conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so obviously you said he's gone, and we mentioned four weeks hunting for a new manager. Nathan Jones was. Heavily rumoured to be that guy. And we know all about that as well here at Swansea because after he pulled the plug on going to Rotherham, people all jumped on the conclusion that it's because he was going to go to Swansea because Duff just got sacked. It doesn't yeah. look like it's going to be the case and fans really did not want that. Mm. Um, but what is going on with the manager hunt then? Why is it taking so long? <laughs> well, I would argue that, first of all, it's taking so long because we didn't have a plan in place, uh, which, which is unforgivable really in this day and age um the chairman then decided he was going to maintain it was he booked a holiday anyway so he was going to go away uh, for the first week of the international break um so nothing happened there in terms of interviews i'm sure i'm sure obviously the the, the recruitment process was in full swing but um, but there were certainly no interviews so that was a week lost already um and then we, we we've heard nothing from the club Nothing at all from the club. Um, we've had bits and pieces. The Nathan Jones um, Fargo, if you want to call it that, was reported in the local press, reliably uh, re- reported. We, we, we're pretty happy that you know what what we what we've been told is is true. In that he's been, he was interviewed, he came to watch a couple of games and decided that it wasn't for him, um, which. I, I, I don't have a problem with that at all. You know, he, he's, he's, he's a, he is a highly sought after, after manager. I accept that he's a Cardiff fan, and, and, and a lot of Swansea fans won't won't be uh, probably won't agree with me. But um, I think he will be a sought after manager. And I think had we been able to get him, it would have been quite a coup for us. But um, I think in reality, we all thought, you know, he's not going to come to us. He's not going to want a relegation on his CV if he's uh, if he's looking for bigger jobs. And and of course. Within within twenty four well within two hours of those finding out he, he decided he didn't want the job, yourselves and Sunderland both sacked, sacked the managers so it was um, it was a crazy crazy night on I think it was Tuesday yeah, this week, it? It just, yeah it, was, it was a crazy evening um, um, they obviously given us competition now so it makes our life perhaps a bit harder but mm, we'll see where it goes with all of all three of us in terms of the recruitment and yeah you know I think it's important that all three clubs get someone in place you you'd like to think of you know, it's we're getting into December now, we're on the seventh. Yeah. Before January is a must, but you want to have a couple of weeks to re- to assess the squad before you can say what you need. Absolutely. So, yeah, ASAP Absolutely. all yeah. round. Um okay, let's let's 
turn your attention to the actual game then this weekend. Mm. And Wayne Carlisle taking caretaker manager. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, we've also got caretaker manager <laughs> head, heading yeah. up. He's taking his... <laughs> we have hours doing his first game, so I couldn't tell you what to expect. I really don't know if there'll be a different output on the pitch from mm. Swansea, so it's difficult for me to talk about what you should expect from us. Uh, yeah. Now, Duff's gone. It's the first one. And, you know, largely the reason he's gone is style of play related. So they want to go back to more of a passing style than what we were you what we were put, putting out this season. Mm. Russell Martin being the extreme, I don't know if we'll get that far, but um, definitely more so than what we were getting from Michael Duff. Yeah. So whether we go that route or not, I don't know, because it is essentially one of Michael Duff's coaches has taken the reins. But what is Wayne Carlisle's uh, style then? What, is, what are we going to see from Rotherham when we head up? This, as you as you rightly point out, this is your third game in charge, and I'm not really sure what you're going to see from this. To be honest with you, um, I, I, going back to the way that we have played away from home, we play so much better against teams that that pass the ball around. Um, <laughs> Great. You know, we, we 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 always have done, even under Paul Warren. You know, uh, when the likes of Swansea and and. And, and Southampton this year, you know, it's great. It's fantastic because we're able to play a, a high intensity, high press game, um, and with the greatest respect to, to, to Swansea and, and other clubs as well, at this level, to play that passing game consistently well is really, really difficult under a high press. And we seem to be quite successful in in breaking that down. Um, yeah, we know all about that, Tori. That's definitely yeah. the way to get at it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and the the better performances this season have been against, against Leeds, Norwich, Leicester, all those home performances, and Southampton away as well. To be fair, with the exception of the first twenty minutes, um, we, we've been very very good. So, I think you will see uh, quite a high intense intense press, um, and we'll we'll put you under pressure. We are. Oh, I don't want to say this because it's tempting fate, it? but we are quite difficult to beat at New York Stadium. Uh, the best way to come and beat us is to come and spoil the game and make it scrappy and horrible. If you do, if you came and did that, I could almost guarantee you three points. Um, because we, we, for some reason, we we aren't able to play against that kind of uh, that kind of sort of style, if you like. So uh, that but, but, yeah, that's not going to be us. No, I accept that. I accept yeah. that, and um, I'm, I'm quite pleased. If I'm honest, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Again, sorry. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, I think I can imagine, yeah, you'd be yeah. quite pleased. Um, I, like I said, I don't know what we would do, but it will either be similar to what we've been doing or there will be more focus on trying to pass. So hmm. maybe suit yourselves a little bit more. You yeah. know, I was looking at some of your results there. And you've got a draw against Ipswich, for example, at home with high flying. And mm. so shows that you're hard to beat because they've been putting goals past anyone. Yeah. And then again, that's another one of those games, you know, when you're down the bottom. They, they took the lead on, I don't know, about 80, 80 minutes or whatever. And it was a cross into the box that ricocheted off the back leg of their player onto onto his front leg, it hit him on the thigh and trickled over the line. It, it was one of those, you know, they, they only ever go in when you're down the bottom. Yeah. Um, it, we could have won that game, I guess, but we can all say that, can't we? You know? um, yeah. But again... Fair, fair enough. Um, going into the game then, formation mm-hmm. and lineup. you've mentioned... Sam Klukas won't be playing. No. So do you have any expectations for who might be on a pitch and who would be the key players for us to watch out for? Well, Victor Johansson will be in goal, um, without a doubt, and he is a key player for us, absolutely. Um, I'd be amazed if he's still with us at the end of this season. I've uh, been hearing very good things about him, considering yeah. obviously yourselves being in currently in the relegation zone. Yeah. He is definitely standing out. Yeah, he's he, he is a, a Premier League keeper in way, and there's it, it, there's no doubt at all. He's he's an excellent goalkeeper. Um, so so he, he'll be in goal. It depends on how he decides to line up at the back. Um, against Hull, he we had Sean Morrison and Grant Hall uh, at the back, which was like you know they they are probably two of the slowest pairs in the Championship, and they got ripped to pieces. Um, I can't see them to start in. I think we'll have um, uh, Ayala. Um, and uh, a chap called Hakeem Adolphin playing at the back, both of whom have got pay. Well, Adolphin's got pace, IL, or not so much, but he, he reads the game very, very well. So I think we'll play a back four with those two. Um, 
Colin Bramall on the left hand side. He's he's a he's a left uh, left back slash wing back. Uh, it'll either be him or Seb Revan, who's on loan from Villa. Uh, those two will fill that left hand side, depending on the who's one one left back, well, obviously one left winger. Uh, Bramall is just he has got electric pace. Uh, he's so fast, so you know he can cause you a problem he, 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 potentially. On the right hand side, it's difficult to tell, difficult to, to determine at the moment. Lee Peltier um, is um, has been playing at right back. He's thirty six, um, and he, he, he kind of lacks a little bit of pace because of that. But he reads the game very very well. So it's either going to be him or Dexter Limbakis, who's on loan from Wolves, um, and he's had a, a a little bit of a tough time of it recently. He's only nineteen and. This is his first full season, so he, he and that shows at times, you know, in terms of his naivety. So I'm not sure it'd be one of those two on the right hand side, and then um, then in midfield, uh, Ollie Rathbone will be in there, who's essentially just a terrier, um, and Jamie Lindsay, I would think, will also take his place in there, and was another terrier, you know, the, the sort of ankle ankle biters, if you like. Yeah. Um, and then 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 who knows. Who knows? I would expect Sam Numbe to start up front. Um, he's and, and and this, I mean, this gives you an indication as to to where we are as a club. He is our first ever million pound player, uh, yeah. And we, we we bought him in the summer from Exeter um, from because Matt Taylor obviously doing very very well. He, he's got some pace. He's he's just starting to find his feet in the championship, um, and he's, he's looking at a really solid prospect. Um, so yeah, I, I would expect him to start, but I would expect him to start up front on his own, um, rather than the likes of Hugo or, or Kelly um, starting alongside him. But we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, and I know I've missed somebody out, but I can't remember who it is. <laughs> is it Apaya? Apaya, yeah. Um, he, he started the other day, and, and again, I mean, he, I think he went for ten million to uh, to Elche. Um, at some stage over the last couple of seasons and he's definitely got he's definitely got something about him but he tends to drift in and out of games or he has done and uh, so whether whether he's got gonna have enough intensity for a for a home start i don't know uh we'll have to wait and see but um he he, he looks a, he looks a good player he, he just he really does so maybe he'll start we'll see i don't know was it um you went from forest was it to is it forest Almeria i've got here for I, I mean nine million it was spain and it was near yeah yeah no that's i didn't <laughs> i've 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 just curious um yeah yeah he's quite young himself then but highly yeah. thought of i guess when he made that move but um, yeah absolutely uh, and you can see why you know he, he's pacey he's tricky he's a proper winger you know so he's uh, on loan to you now is he yes he is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh yeah <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Um, uh, you mentioned a few names there that will pique the interest of some listeners, I'm sure. Uh, three, actually, ex-Cardiff players. Uh, mm. Lee Peltier being one of them. Yeah. Sean Morrison, oh, you course. mentioned, hope, hopefully not featuring. And Jordan Hugill. So yeah, I wonder <laughs> I wonder if any of them will, will get get on the pitch. Hugill definitely not. Hugel Hugel will. will definitely, without a okay. doubt. Well, he's the uh, one that we... played probably the least for them. I think he had a, like a loan stint last season or something. Yeah, so. he's he's a he's a he's a he's a handful, Jordan Hugel, um, and and he could cause so many more so many more problems than he than he than he does. Um, he, he's he's one of these players that he he's, he's, he kind of spends sort of fifty or sixty percent of his time trying to buy free kicks, and if he spent. 10 or 20 percent of his time doing that and the rest of it playing football you know he'd score a lot more goals but um it is yeah he's okay it, it will finish if he gets the opportunity he will finish but we've not been creating very many chances and that's that's obviously an issue so one of the thing one of the ways we played under matt taylor when we had paul warren it was all about getting the ball in the box get the ball in the box cause problems um and it seems we've gone to the opposite extreme where we don't want to put the ball in the box at all under Matt Taylor, I mean that's obviously an exaggeration, but you know the the, the difference has been huge, yeah. Um, and he's not been able to feed off that. So whether Wayne Carlisle will tweak it or not, it it, it kind of did against Birmingham, and we got we we created a, a hell of a lot more, and arguably should have perhaps won that game. 
Uh, where one cleared off the line or a couple cleared off the line and hit the crossbar. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see whether he starts, but I expect it to be non -beard. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to flip the question on you a little bit and ask if you know of, because I know sometimes um, you might not have watched much of us playing, but any Swansea players that worry you you think could do some damage against Rotherham? The, the, no, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I... I and I, I go on quite a few sort of podcasts like this, and I don't, I don't tend to look at the opposition until they turn up on a Saturday afternoon because, yeah, um, I, I have we, we do two podcasts a week, and it's enough for me just trying to remember. No, what I understand. I it's, it's a lot, but um, I, I, I mean, I, I, we've we've obviously seen met, met quite a few times over the past few seasons, particularly while Russell Martin's been in charge, and from an outsider's point of view. And I'd be interested to know what your view is on on, on this as a, as a sort of Swansea fan. That I've never ever been a big fan of Russell Martin and the way he plays his football. <laughs> it seems to be all about possession and not nothing or very little about progression. You know, he he loves to play around the back and everything else, and but but not progressively. That's yeah. how it feels. I don't know whether that's right or not. It's a massive debate at the moment because. You've got this thing called the Swansea way, which is possession-based. Mm. Russell Martin took it to the extreme more than any other manager has before in regards to how much possession you have. And, mm. you know, during his time here, there was a lot of criticism at certain points when we weren't doing so well about possession for the sake of it and we're not mm. actually doing anything with it. But, you know, you get up to 80% of the ball but still lose a game 1-0. Yeah. And the other teams only had the ball for 20% of the time. And we yeah. had a period of three wins in 24 or something last season, which really cost us playoff position. Yeah. Um, and and that was the sort of the comment, I guess. But mm. because when it works, it's so good to watch, I guess, so that you forget some of those bad things. <laughs> yeah. Or at least I say you forget. A lot of people forget. Yeah. So even when he was here, he was quite divisive. Mm. When Duff has come in now, you know, it's not as pretty. Duff made comments about. Um, he made. He said some comments, something around the lines of, um, "Look, it was a nice way of playing football, but he sees it a bit differently and thinks you should do a bit more of the ball." Kind of what you just said. Mm. Um, and people saw that as a little bit of a dig about what Martin was doing here. And I don't know. It's it's mm. just a messy situation, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do I, I, agree with you to an extent. I think there was definitely periods where it was too much, especially yeah. in our own half. And if you look at the goals we were conceding, quite often we were getting caught like in around our box and then mm. on the transition there's an opportunity for the op opposition as we are trying to get back into defensive shape. Because obviously when you're playing a pass in a football game, you all go into positions to receive the ball. Yeah. You try and spread the pitch, make the pitch as big as possible mm. and give options everywhere. So when you lose the ball, yeah, there's a lot of gaps yeah. to, to exploit. Mm. And when there's targeted um, pressing, I guess, and the other opposition has done done their homework about where to go and where not to go and where to try mm. and win the ball back, quite often that ended up being the way we conceded quite a lot of goals. So, yeah, um, it was nice to watch when it worked, but when it didn't work, when we go 1-0 down against a team like... Like yourselves, maybe, mm. or or other teams that do a press, especially at our own stadium, and then they just sit back for ninety minutes. Yeah, can't really break them down when you're just passing it around, and they they got yeah. eleven men behind the ball, and it's not anything clinical to kind of go through the lines. But um, mm. yeah, it's uh, it could have been better. Like I said, that period was cost us playoffs. Um, yeah, but I guess you see how he develops it out of Southampton he's in the playoffs at the moment but he's got a little bit more of a kitty to work with so and yeah. a better squad uh, to kind of pull it off because I think he, it is right what you were saying about you need good players to do it at this level which is what he said uh, is it, what he was quoted as saying weren't he that to the chairman at Swansea wasn't willing to back him um, yeah so I don't like stuff like that though because he knew that when he took the job yeah, yeah. and he wasn't backed in one window out of four Mm. And that's the window he's using. But yeah, it was it was the January last January, and we went on the run of games I mentioned after he didn't get what he wanted mm. in that January window. He kind of threw his toys out the pram a little bit. Yeah, we went on a really bad run. Eventually, I think he gave his head a bit of a wobble and got us back around to playing well, and we ended the season really, really strongly. Mm. 
mm. but we finished three points outside the playoffs. And you, just, you, I don't know if I can forgive the fact that if he didn't have a bit of a tantrum, but the fact he didn't get a striker in yeah. and got th- turned three losses into draws or one mm. loss into a win, yeah. all of a sudden you could have been in the playoffs and yeah. in a different world right now. But um, yeah, it is what it is, and we move on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, yeah. and progress probably. Well, we'll see. We'll see where they get in and the new yeah, chapter we'll... starts. But um, <laughs> I'm hoping it will be upwards from here. As I hope, you know, you manage to sort your own situation out yourself and find someone in that that's able to kind of recover uh, your season, I guess. Uh, from yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice. Liam Richardson is the uh, the, the current hot favourite, which, you know, it, it, it's... He's got a little bit of experience, and he's a he's a well thought of manager, albeit he's not got he's not sort of done a great deal. Well thought of, well thought of coach, sorry. In yeah. terms of managing, he's, he's another. Sometimes master. giving people like that the start is is the best thing when yeah. uh, when you've got nothing to lose, you know. So, and then it, I know you eventually lose that person to a better team. Yeah, but they could take the club forward to a certain level before that, isn't it? That'd be nice. Um, yeah. Um, last question, not football related, but I always ask this one to end the videos, and that is when you go to the stadium, what is your favourite pint or any drink if if you, if you don't like the alcohol uh, of choice to have while you're watching the game? <laughs> wow, um, I don't drink it. I don't tend to drink when I go to a, a game, so I just have a coffee, which is really boring. Fair isn't enough. It? No, no, I, I love it's a bit. Boring. I love a coffee. I've but got I'm... a um, my advent calendar this year is is a coffee advent calendar. So wow. there we go. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'm yeah. boring too. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. I like it. I'm happy. Yeah, I, I'm happy I, I, I enjoy my morning. um my coffee in the morning and throughout the day. I guess depending on how uh, how the day's going. But um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if you're going to pick a coffee, then what would you pick? Uh, well, at a football ground, it's not you. You're not you. It doesn't have to be to. limited to football ground. But if you could take any any one you've ever had in, what would it be? Oh, oh that, that is a really good question. And uh, I don't know, I'm a flat white man, so I just, yeah. so, so long as it's 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 strong and milky, I'm happy with that. Fair enough. I yeah. like a flat white as well. Um, but yeah, there we go. Thank you very much, Mick, for joining me. Um, good luck for the rest of the season and best of luck in your manager hunt as well. Um, I, it doesn't look like either of us will get it fixed before Saturday. But no. Thereafter, I hope, um, hope whether it is when we meet again later in the season, uh, let's hope the conversation is a little bit better when it comes to uh, the situation of both clubs, I guess. Um, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah fingers crossed. We'll both be sitting outside the playoffs instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might be. Um, nah. No, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But um, yeah, good luck. And if you want to go and check out uh, Mick's stuff with the rest of the guys, it's uh, the New York sorry, New York Talk podcast. Um, I know you recorded just before you came on. So is that like your pre-match stuff you've done there? Yeah, well, it was sort of 55 minutes talking about the manager debacle and five minutes talking about Saturday. So, but yeah, <laughs> just skip to the last five minutes. But yeah, where can we find you then if we wanted to check that stuff out? Uh, we're on YouTube and uh, and all the other sort of podcast providers, so Spotify, Apple, yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if you just type in New York Talk, you will find us. Brilliant. So go check out New York Talk and Mick, I'm sure I'll speak to you later in the season as well and um, have a good evening and enjoy the weekend. And you. Thanks, Luke. Thank you very much.